Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beard is opening Friday at Keeneland. Spring is in the air and race number nine is a very important prep race for the Kentucky Oaks. It's the grade one Ashland. These three-year-old fillies go a mile and a sixteenth. Remember, short stretch at a mile and a sixteenth at Keeneland. Let's take a look at this field. This is one of the best fields of three-year-old fillies we've seen assembled this year. Just FYI, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies last year. Jody's Pride was second. Candied was third. And now you've got a new face, Mike, in the number seven, Impel, who's actually the morning line favorite for Brad Cox. Yeah, you're right, though. It's a really good race. This is, you know, why it's always it's always good to remember that when Keeneland opens, you start getting races like this again. It seems like they don't run races like this anywhere anymore. But you have the undefeated two-year-old uh, Philly chanted in just FYI finally getting back here, Dan. And if you feel like taking a shot against her here with some question marks, there are plenty of alternatives. $600,000 on the line in purse money, and the Ashland will throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Just FYI, chase some fast fractions in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. She might be fresh in her first start off the layoff, but I would think that Bill Mott would at least want her to have a target or two. Impel is tactical, but not exactly a blazer, and Jody's pride drew a lousy outside post position. I wonder if Leslie's Rose, a horse that was so close to the pace in her first two starts, I think stretching out, they got to take advantage of this inside post. Yeah, Dan, I looked at the race the exact same way here. I mean, certainly they could just, you know, it's her first time around two turns with Leslie's Rose. They could rate her again as they've done in her last two starts. But I feel like if they wanted the lead here from post three, they could have it. And it might, it might be a pretty good idea for Irad to come out running from the debut. Now, her uncoupled stablemate drew the inside post. That's the number one candied. I really like the way she won her debut at Saratoga, going three quarters of a mile. The Alcibiades was next. She was very green when she won over this course in distance. She didn't change leads, but she was comfortable beating some nice uh, fillies. In the Breeders' Cup, it took her a little while to get going in the stretch, but she was making up late ground. I'm hoping, and I think this is the hope for Todd and the Connections, that this horse has grown up a little bit, not only physically, but also has figured out the lead changes, figured out the mechanical issues, because if she does, she's a very dangerous threat here. Agreed. If she has grown up and takes a step forward or a three-year-old debut, she's going to be a handful in this race. She was good as a two-year-old, and I think it's just worth going back and watching that Breeders' Cup again, Dan, because it wasn't necessarily a race where you wanted to be left with a lot to do in the stretch. She stumbled a little bit at the start. She was last in the first run through the stretch there, got to the outside. She made up a lot of ground in that race. It's a very, to me, a very underrated performance. I liked her first two starts a lot. And she ran way better than it looks at the Breeders' Cup. Standout sensation, I think many people are simply going to dismiss on paper based on the fact she's eligible for a non-winners of two life. She was claimed, albeit for a whopping $100,000 last year, and that she's lost her first three starts for this barn. You can also argue that she's faced some of the fairgrounds' best three-year-old fillies this winter. Two starts back, making it real, real close to the good Tarifa. And then, last time out, running against a horse that would come back to run second in the fairgrounds oaks with a 93 buyer speed figure so this one's kept good company interesting that the blinkers go on maybe we see some speed from her yeah maybe we do she has she's shown speed anyway maybe they want to get a little bit more out of her here you're right to uh point out that she's been keeping good company and, and you could say holding her own in, in those races dan the problem is it doesn't get any easier for her in this race i mean she's in another really tough spot here and it's just it's pretty clear on paper. She's got to improve quite a bit to go with these horses. I really like the way Leslie's Rose won her first two starts. One at Aqueduct as her one and only start as a two-year-old, and then that first level allowance going seven-eighths of a mile. She showed good speed. Now, the paces were not fast in either one of those races, and maybe that helped her out. In the Devona Dale, they stretched her out to a mile. She's going to finish third in this race. She gets wired in here, Mike, and she's sort of down in an uncomfortable position on the inside against some good horses. In a Champagne, the runner-up ran third third in last week's Gulfstream Oaks with an 81 buyer. Yeah, that, that's a decent horse. The horse that's on the lead here just sort of got away pretty soft early and they couldn't catch her. And I think that point that you made, though, Dan, with her sitting inside, and it seemed like that was the plan to just sort of rate and see what happened. And it just sort of felt like she didn't want to come up the inside in the stretch there. When you watch the head on, listen, the leader never really drifted off. It never really opened up for her. But if she wanted to force her way in, she could have. And it seemed like Leslie Rose just didn't want to do that 
And so Iran just finally altered course with her. It was way too late at that point. You can be disappointed. She was one to five in there. That was the race where just FYI was entered and scratched. And it felt like a great opportunity for her. I would be a little lenient. I don't love the trip that she pulled. And I think she can do a lot better than that. She is a seven-figure yearling purchase by Into Mischief with some stamina on the bottom. I think a mile and a 16th of Keelan with a short stretch will be just fine. Helena's Forte is the number four. And I think distance might be a little bit of a question mark here. He's by the She's by the very fleet Matole out of the quick, out of a mare by the quick. Yes, it's true. Here's her win going seven eighths in the ruthless last time out. She caught a wet track, Mike. And I thought she got a pretty good setup, but at the end of the day, she bested a couple of next out winners, including the runner up who came back to take the cicada with an 85 buyer and looks like one of the ones to beat in Saturday's gazelle. Yeah, I think this runner up's actually pretty good. And and uh, Helena Forte just overpowers her through the stretch. She They raided her. They sat outside. I think they knew they were on the best horse stand. And as it turns out, they were. She wins this race pretty comfortably over a decent field of horses. It's just, it's all about distance now. She's not really bred to get better stretching out and to stretch her out for the first time against this kind of a field. I mean, that's a lot to ask. I think she has a ton of ability. I think at a, you know, the right kind of price around 10 to one, she's a little interested in this race. I wonder if shimmering allure is a little bit dirtied up coming into this race. My major concern is that she just doesn't have a lot of early speed and she could be left with a lot to do turning into the short stretch, but she looked pretty good winning the tempted. And in the demoiselle, it was just a four wide trip all the way around the track where she's second best to the, you know, the, the favored pace setter who got away with the lead last time out in the Busanda, she caught a wet track and she caught a pretty decent horse. The winner coming back to run third in the bush or in the 72. We'll see her in the gazelle as well. Yeah. She was very disappointing last time uh, over that muddy track. I thought the race too bad. She actually ran pretty well. It, w it wasn't a day where he wanted to be making up a ton of ground. She just didn't get a very aggressive ride. I don't know what the plan was there, but it never really worked out. I hated that ride. Um, she was bad last time. Another horse who just has to really move forward in this race, Dan. And she can also be pretty badly pace compromised in here. I mean, they like to sit and make one run. That may not work out in here. Kenny McPeak, though, did score the fantasy last week with a horse returning off a pretty lengthy layoff. Thorpedo Anna, maybe a couple months off for shimmering allure, will do her some good. Just FYI, last year's two-year-old Philly champion, deservedly so, three for three, easy winner of the Frisette. Good-looking winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Got up close to a solid pace, and I know there wasn't a ton of closing going on, but she's going to make the lead here, and she's going to hold Jody's pride at bay. I thought the top two finishers ran well. I thought Candy, still on her left lead and yeah. still learning, ran well also. Yeah, all three of these horses ran well, and it's 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 pretty fun to have all three of them come back in this race to meet up again. Um, and unfortunately for just FYI, I guess she's got to do it, you know, after a little bit of an issue, missing the scheduled prep, and now she turns up here. So maybe all that stuff works against her. The good news is we already know she's good enough to beat this field. We already know she can get any kind of a trip in a race. It doesn't really matter. She wasn't favored in any of her starts last year, Dan. She might not be favored here, and she could be the best horse. I, I think certainly she's the most accomplished horse. Yeah. She beat three next out winners in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, the fourth place horse coming back to win the Demoiselle with an 84 buyer before bombing in her subsequent start. We'll see her likely in the Gazelle. Impel is two to one. Favored all of all of these stars from last year. And maybe deservedly so, Mike, based on this last run a first level allowance, her first time around two turns, she got right up close to the pace. She took over the lead at will at the three eighths pole. And I like the last 16th of a mile where she just runs away from them. 91 buyer speed figure for Impel, beautiful Judmont pedigree, tactical speed. Now it's the class test. Yeah, a stiff class test too, facing a good field here. It's hard to not. To not be really impressed, though, with her first two starts, Danny. She has, in, in case you're unsure about it, just by looking at it on paper, she's got plenty of speed, man. I mean, she's right up close, but she is under a huge pull in those races just to make sure she doesn't go to the lead. So if they want the lead, and I think they could have it. Um, we'll see how they decide to play things here. I, I'm with you. I'm glad that you pointed out the, the last part of that race we just watched right there because she finished it off really strongly in there. I don't know. I'm not going to be surprised when she wins here. I'm not going to be surprised when she turns out to be really good. I'm also probably not taking her at a super short price against this field. That's the thing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Jody's Pride is up next, the number eight, a neck away from being undefeated champion. 
She was second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And I think she's a very underrated horse. And it's kind of funny that among the top three finishers of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, she's the only one that's run this year. Here's the Busher Invitational at Aqueduct going a one-turn mile. And Jody's Pride stayed off the rail. That was probably the best part of the racetrack. But this Carmelina is a hard-knocking Midlantic-based filly for Butch Reed. Probably doesn't want to go a mile. Maybe that's stretching her ability. And Jody's Pride, I thought, did what she had had to do off the layoff. Uh, Jorge Abreu was very pleased after the race, and rightly so. And afterwards, I was there that day. I talked to Jorge afterwards, and he just said, we're going to the Gazelle. It's interesting he's running here in the grade one when the Gazelle, it's likely she's favored in that race. Oh, yeah, that's probably a really good sign. That's some good information right there. I personally did. I know it didn't come back that fast. Really liked her prep race for this for this in the busher. It wasn't the greatest field. They just sat on the outside until it was time. She won that race really easily. It was a slight step forward off of what she had done as a two-year-old, all of which was really good. All of those performances, really solid. If she moves forward again here, she's right there. She's another horse who's very versatile as far as trip goes. I wouldn't overlook this horse. Eight to one on the morning line for Jody's Pride uh, seems like a little bit of an overlay. Let's take a look. Uh, before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Major final Kentucky Derby preps this Saturday, Santa Anita, New York, Keeneland. Let's take a look at our top picks for a very important Kentucky Oaks prep race. You're going with Leslie's Rose. I think they're going to be more aggressive with her. And I think if we're going to see the real Leslie's Rose, we're going to see it here. That's how I looked at it too. And I, and I also felt like she could, I think she's talented enough, Dan. She obviously has something to prove here, but I think she's talented enough. Um, and she's been one to five in her last two starts. And she's going to be, I think she's going to be a pretty fair price in this race. And to me, that was the deciding factor. I think if she's around that four to one, I'm going to take a shot with her near, and I'm going to hope that Irad breaks the gate running. Didn't have the morning line odds when I made my picks. Not sure I would have went with Impel the seven if she, I knew she was going to be two to one on the line. But I also think there's a chance that she might not go it off favor. Okay. And that just FYI's reputation precedes her and she ends up the chalk. I'm not sure I would really want to take anything less than three to one on Impel in this race, but I think she's going to give a good accounting of herself. She's shown nothing but promise in two lifetime starts. Three, one, four, six for Mike, seven, four, eight, six for me. The six is just FYI, and we'll see if she makes it four for four and makes a last mad dash for the Kentucky Oaks.